if you're trying to get a carrier 411 carrier monitoring service for your freight brokerage, make sure that you use it according to ethical standards and business practices. Okay, so, you know, there's no need for you to get this uh, carrier 411 monitoring service and then abuse it like a lot of freight brokers do. Okay, so if a trucking company is late for pickup, uh, if a company, um, you know, is delayed for delivery because of traffic conditions, because of border crossing conditions, because of whatever type of delays or slowdowns that may happen that are legitimate. And you can find out by taking a look at maps, taking a look at cameras, taking a look at different websites of border crossings, for example, and figure out what if the stuff that's being told to you by the carrier is legitimate. After doing your due diligence, okay, I would still not go on carrier 411 and put a bad, you know, uh, comment or a bad report, a freight guard report on a carrier just because there was one bad service that happened because of delays, okay? Now, it is different Okay, if a carrier lies to you, if a carrier does unethical business practices from their end and you catch them doing this, okay, that is not the right way to do business. This would probably warrant a good freight guard. Okay, in addition to this, if you decide to get carrier 411, okay, um, I would still consider if a carrier fails in service to talk to the business owner of that trucking company. So the trucking company owner, not the dispatch manager, not the dispatcher that made the mistake, okay? But someone who is an actual decision maker at the trucking company, okay? Now, if you do this, you will be able to take a look at ways forward, okay? So it's almost like a corrective action a corrective action response and you can file this report with the carrier's documentation and uh, the carrier's relationship with you uh, through the TMS system that you use and obviously documents inside of safe and secure folders and safe and secure servers okay you can go uh, out about it that way and it will actually be the ethical thing to do for you and that should be step one if you do not agree with the carrier's performance on any given load or loads that you tender to them, okay? But some ways that Carrier 411 can help the entire community is if you are going to go on there and you will report or file freight guards against carriers that cancel loads at will just because they can, okay? That's fine to do if mc numbers are double brokering freight without your permission even with your permission that's almost like you know that's a bit unethical on both ends but if they're double brokering freight and it's a carrier that's taken a load and given it to another carrier without you knowing okay it can get you into some financial issues okay where potentially you may even lose a shipper because under certain laws carriers can go to shippers and get paid for loads that the shipper already paid you on so the shipper would have to double pay a load but the problem is you will lose that relationship okay you will lose that customer so you have to really consider whether or not it is something of use to you to do okay um, I would definitely avoid at all costs double brokering uh, scenarios, okay? But if you get double brokered on, this would be a way for you to file a freight guard against a trucking company that does this to you without your written consent of them doing it. In some circumstances, it may be warranted, okay? For example, truck breakdowns and they're trying to resolve an issue for you. OK, but if they're doing it just because they want to, you know, make a profit but not use their own assets and they're not being honest about what's happening and nobody knows that they're sending in a random carrier that you have no history about, 
that's a red flag. Okay, that is a red flag. And there's a lot of those out there. So yes, those type of situations, you can file a freight guard in that respect. Okay. One that's really, really important. Okay. If a carrier at any time, okay, holds loads hostage. Okay. So they, they actually do not deliver and request the entire rate or the entire uh, price that you agreed upon before the load was even given to them. If they request you to give that to them, okay, before they deliver a load, and you only find out about this during in transit, okay, that warrants definitely a hold loads hostage report, a freight guard against that carrier. Because that is very unethical, disrespectful. We have families to feed. We have people that we have to answer to. And so if I am willfully giving you a load and giving you the rate at which you want it to go and you agree to the payment terms that are on the rate confirmation and in transit you decide otherwise before we actually tender the load over to you, that is a problem. That definitely is an issue and that warrants definitely a freight guard in that respect okay one that's a little bit gray area is the unresolved cargo claims okay so that one has to be something that you communicate with the carrier and try to reach a settlement okay it has to be clear evidence that the carrier is at fault for you to warrant a freight claim or that is a freight guard excuse me against that carrier okay if they do not if there is no clear evidence about the carrier doing anything wrong and you're just upset that a claim hasn't been resolved because your customer claimed against you, that is something you will have to look at with your shipper and also look at with your carrier. Okay, there, But there is no need for you to go on carrier 411 and m abuse the system. Okay, We have to look at it as... A, an environment where everybody is winning in the equation, okay? Both the carrier, the shipper, the broker, everybody res uh, involved in any transaction can win, okay? Can actually come out on the other end and, and feel like nobody got the short end of the stick, okay? But if we're just going to go and get ourselves as fray brokers, get ourselves a carrier 411 account, and then ah. Uh, we'll go on there and just start hammering away random reports for late pickup, late delivery, late crossing the border. Um, you know, drivers showed up with uh, everything except boots or drivers showed up with boots but didn't have a coat on. And just putting these random freight guards that only hurts the trucking company at the end i don't think that's a, that's a, a the way it was meant to be used okay so please do your due diligence uh, before you go out and start reporting random unwarranted uh freight guards against carriers okay they are there's a lot of carriers out there that are hard-working individuals and companies that try to service you the best they can Things happen, okay? Yes, they have to communicate to you. They should communicate you. But even with communication, if you're still going to go on Carrier 411 and file a freight guard, that's unacceptable. So please, for the love of God, please go to your carriers, talk to them, and tell them this is the last time, okay? You guys didn't do what you said you were going to do. Let's work towards a healthier relationship forward. And the way we do that is by running and testing another load. Are you willing to do that as a carrier? Yes or no? If they say no, then you just put them on the do not use list and move on with your business and your life. Okay? But these freight guards do hurt carriers and using them and abusing them and misrepresenting the scenario or the situation or event that happened is not the accurate way to go about it. OK, and um, hopefully you guys can implement this type of advice into your freight brokerage services for the betterment of our industry and for the betterment of our entire um, logistics uh, platform from air, ocean, ground, rail, whatever you participate in. So thank you very much. <laughs>